Today's video, by your popular request, it's the RV that says, you don't need to build an office, we already did it for you. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Vicious RV, actually down here at Keystone today. They were kind enough to pull in a copy of their new front living fifth wheel, and I think you're going to like what you see here. I actually think it's one of my favorite front livings I've seen in a long time, even though it technically has a front office in front of the front living, which is a lot of frontage if you're picking up what I'm putting down. I'd like to also dedicate today's video to Mr. Aaron Thor. He's a regular uh, viewer who anytime there's an opportunity to put an office kind of workspace in an RV, he's there for it. And he wants to learn about it. So Aaron, this video is for you today. What Montana did here is they took their very popular front living arrangement. Um, they basically said, what if instead of a half bath, we gave it an office space? Now, I, I know a lot of us have jokingly referred to the, uh, the bathrooms as our second office. I, I'm certain I've made that joke at least once in my life per week. But the fact is, that's basically what they did. They took, they, they gave it a traditional rear bedroom uh, with kind of a, a little bit of a middle bathroom, but they took the space for a half bath and tacked it onto the front of the RV. They also did some really interesting things with the kitchen of this, where technically the kitchen is smaller than their other front living rooms. I don't think you're going to feel that way. I think you're going to feel, and this to me looks like it's one of the biggest middle kitchens I've seen them do in a long, long time. Uh, it has all the traditional things that you're really looking for out of Montana, like the, the hot, cold weather package, the big king bed. This one's outfitted with triple air conditioners and one of their more advanced optional solar packages. But you've got the better tires if you are going to roll down the road, uh, rated for 75 miles an hour with TPMS, including their spare tire, which is something most manufacturers don't do. You've got that diesel Full pusher cargo tray coming out the back side of this thing, which is absolutely Crouching fantastic. Tiger, hidden office, uh, not to mention, in the of front course, of one. Oh. and there's a ton to cover in this RV, but I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to make the most sense if we jump right up there to that front office first. I'd love to hear what you think about this model. Good, bad, ugly in between. I'm going to try it. There's some things I don't like about this one. There's a lot of things I do like about it. Let's hit each other straight on. Let's be fair about this and let's see what we can come up with together in terms of feedback for the factory. Let them know how they did. Now, just to help you get your bearings here, like if you wake up in the morning or you walk out of the bathroom, this would kind of be your view right here. The one kind of trick with a floor plan like this it's a huge fifth wheel but it's kind of chopped up into a bunch of these little individual rooms which sometimes you you lose the sense of space that you have in here so i kind of wanted to do just sort of one big connecting kind of shot to give you your frame of reference although you know i might have to do the same thing from the front to the back but you get it now there's things i love about this rv but there's just little details like you know they use the, the nice big xl vent fans but no shade in the entry door, just to me, that seems like kind of a little bit of an oversight. And I don't want to underplay it because they do a very nice job here. But like you've probably, if you've looked at big fifth wheels, you've seen this setup before a theater seat and a pair of hide beds. Uh, you've got yourself a, uh, uh, you know, big entertainment center across from that with a fireplace. Like you've seen this show before where this one starts to get a little more interesting and unique is what happens all the way up in front of a front living room. It's a fronter office. <laughs> and when you come in here, it is very interesting. Uh, so over here on the wall, instead of a window, you have like a little push pin board, a little idea board or something like that, where you can, uh, you know, keep yourself organized. Now, just to help kind of complete the visual, to give you an idea of the sense of space, I threw my personal work laptop over here. And obviously, I think if you had a printer and stuff, you'd eat up this counter space real quick. But just to give you, like, you can legitimately use this as an office. Now, the things that I think are awesome, they did some really clever, uh, intelligent locations uh, for their uh, power outlets. The one that I don't know that I love is down here. You've got household and USB plugs, and you do have that little ringlet hole over in the corner where you could feed some power cords up through. My two cents, I would personally like that set of power outlets right there on that brown front wall. The side wall being laminated makes it harder, but the brown front wall is behind the nose cap and it's hollow, so that could be done. Now, there, uh, I, I found enough 
leg room, enough knee room down here, and the chair is dedicated strictly to this office area. You can see just like the rest of the walkable space in this, this is a, uh, a carpetless layout. You will technically, like if I back up a little bit, you'll see a little bit of carpet right there. That's not really walkable, it's just kind of there to help cover up a little bit of structural element, you know? And we'll get a look at all of the storage in here. But if you noticed, there was a little bit of a step up leading into this office. What kind of headroom is that going to leave us, I wondered. So to give you a reference, I'm a little bit over six foot myself. And the upper deck of this is about six and a half foot tall. So, you know, just to give you, that's the, the plain reference point. Now there was that little step up in the front end of the office. Why is that there? Well, that is there for structure for the upper deck. Most of the time you don't see that in RVs. Uh, because it's in the closet area. And some RVs, like uh, Alliances, for instance, use a different type of chassis that doesn't have that structural beam right there. And it does mean that we step up into this a little bit. And as you can see, it means that at my height, I do need to crane my head. And someone's going to look at that and say, hmm, instant deal breaker. But one of the reasons I want to put myself on camera like this is I, I don't know that it's really that big of a deal, at least for me, because if I'm coming up here to my office, by the time I'm coming in here, I'm probably already leaning for it to get down to my chair to have a seat. I never felt like I had headroom issues. And once you're here, suddenly it's plenty of space. Now, once again, just to kind of give you the, uh, you know, the, the personal size demo here. I'm obviously carrying more weight than I should be. I'm not really proud of that. I don't really like how I look on camera right now, but that doesn't change the fact that I wanted to give you an idea. I still have room. If I wanted to scoot up a little bit, sorry, the camera got jumpy there. I could get a little bit closer. I could install a slide out keyboard tray if I wanted to do something like that and really be able to stay here and lean back. I've got my laptop set over here to the side, but it's the same size countertop in front of me if you want to have like that awesome office view and this thing up here is actually a uh, obviously a privacy shade that uh, can come down to to totally block this out if you want. There's even um, it's not flat; it's kind of recessed down here. But if somebody wanted to do some kind of little I don't know office LED accent lighting, I suppose they could do that. Just keep in mind that's on the opposite side of the privacy shade. So if you leave your disco lights going at night, you're gonna maybe be annoying the neighbors. So try to be a uh, you know a decent fellow RVer instead of like a good neighbor, stay over there, um, which is a little twist on the popular Jake from State Farm theme. <laughs> So, like I said, I've got the laptop off to the side. You could do more of a forward-facing office arrangement. You could obviously have that shade down if the sunlight's becoming a, a little bit of a problem. And to look at the different um, storage areas that you have over here, first of all, you can see the, the quadruple drawers down to the floors. Like the rest of the drawers that you'll find in this RV, those are um, soft clothes, which is actually, I think, really, really cool. Um, and it's not quite as deep as maybe it looks because the nose cap does taper back. But if we start up here, you can see we've got some storage there, but it goes down into, I think, a very reasonable, um, uh, like, desk, not like drawer setup, but you get the idea. Just general storage. Um, maybe a couple drawers right there would be terrible, but considering we have drawers over on the other side, I don't know that that's awful either. Um, backing up a little bit, uh, one thing that is a little bit interesting is the light switch for that's actually out here. Because you have that sliding privacy door occupying that wall, it, it, it gave it the most direct route um, for you to be able to turn the lights off and on when you're uh, going in and out. Now, moonwalking backwards down the stairs, and I nearly bit it just now, but thankfully I did not. If we start by looking up top, you see the, uh, I call it the air traffic controller lighting. Uh, the little accent light above all that crown molding that you find in these Montanas. And if you're doing some work at night and you don't want all the lights on, it provides just the perfect amount of light to be able to navigate from front to back, like maybe to get back to the bathroom and then back up to the office or whatever the case may be. You know, you can uh, do all kinds of stuff here. Now, of course, we got the electric space heating, bunion burning, phalanges frying, tootsie toaster down there if we mash all the names together, aka electric heater. We've also got some USB plugs built right into the slide box. Now, it's gonna, we're gonna have a, a big old beam in our way here, but in a way, I think that's kind of neat because it helps kind of clearly define the kitchen versus the living room. Like, that's not structural. That's just there to kind of be a little bit of a visual element. One of the other things I like is like if you're standing at the sink doing some prep work or you're down in the kitchen, you can still see up enough to see what's going on in the entertainment station. Although I do suppose it depends on how big of a head the person in front of you has, something like that there. Now, one of the other kind of neat things here 
is these do have um, two section day and night shade rollers all the way through what I'm going to call, um, you know, the big full Monty uh, Montana series as opposed to high country. You get the two section shades here. Um, flipping our way back around, like if you're in the office and looking backwards, now this is kind of what you'd see. That theater um, recliner, you can see has a little population controlling armrest fixed in the middle. But it does have um, power, uh, you know, incline, decline, recline, um, all the clines, basically. Uh, Robert Klein, if there's a person named Robert Klein watching, you might enjoy this. I don't know. I also, they could have just left it open air, but just that little kind of metallic, dedicated banister-ish kind of thing right there. It just, it's those little touches that just help clearly define things that I really like and really respect on Montana's. Now, um, Cougar and Montana use Keystone's Blade Pure air system that they literally accidentally developed and realized, oh crap, this thing works really, really well. So basically their ducting system's a little bit different. I won't, you can't see it, so I won't get too detailed on that. But they also use these little bit different vents right here, which pull more of the air in the ductwork down into the living room via a little bit of a, uh, a cyclone kind of uh, fluid dynamics action. And their air conditioning unit itself looks different because they have a residential air filter built right on them. This one that we're looking at, though, is optioned and outfitted with the third air conditioner, which is something that you can put on any big full Montana. Normally here in the kitchen, you'd get one of those rain sensing XL vent fans. Um, and what's really cool is you still do in this floor plan due to the fact that they put the stovetop not against an exterior wall, so it wouldn't have a traditional vent. Instead, you know, with your uh, stove over here, you don't have a wall that you can exhaust that out of, so they put a big XL rain-sensing vent fan directly above it uh, if you are cooking up a storm to get the, uh, the heat out of the RV. Um, by default, this floor plan would typically have two of those, but on any full Monty Montana, you can sacrifice one of the kitchen uh, fans for that third air. Now, that is not a centrally ducted air. The third air on these never is. What is interesting, though, is the front air and the rear air are fully centrally ducted. But it also means that you've got an uh, air conditioner located near the back end of the RV by your bedroom and bathroom that are enclosed. And an air conditioner by the front end of the RV by the office, which does have a central air duct, by the way, to get you air up there. Uh, to keep you more comfortable, even on the odd ends of the RV. So I think overall, uh, they did a, a really good job here. Now, this kitchen is kind of crazy, and I want to slowly wrap my way around it, because technically, this is a smaller kitchen than what you typically find in a lot of these Montanas, but here's the thing. It actually looks and feels bigger, in my opinion, because they didn't try to bury an island into it, and it's just dual opposing slides. And it actually, uh, I, I think, provides one of the best, most functional spaces, still giving us really good storage capacity. Now, a couple little details here, and then I'm going to bust open all the storage. All solid surface counters in these. Um, what's interesting here is for their sink, they also include a rollaway dish drying rack, but you can just use the uh, hard prep space if you want. And they even have the little dish strainer thing kind of uh, included with it down there, which is removable, obviously, if you don't like that or you want to clean it. But they, they're they doing all of the things. I've seen some brands do some of this, but never quite all of it. And they're doing all of it here. By the way, that big, tall uh, ceiling vent fan, switch for it's right there. Now, some people aren't going to like this. And I, I like to try to share good with bad or points of concern or whatever. Um, Keystone has stuck with a lot of floor ducted heating because it is a more effective heating system. They haven't gone with a ductless system uh, or a cabinet side ducted system. Um, some people like that. Some people don't. It, uh, you know, there's different RVs for different folks. That's just what these guys do. I do really respect how they were really smart about their outlet locations. Uh, really, for the most part, other than that wonky one, even in the office and back here in the kitchen. And anywhere that you see these yellow stickers, that is prepped and ready uh, uh, to the inverter system on the RV if one is included. Now, the RV we're looking at today has a residential fridge, so this by default has a 2,000 watt inverter, but you can also get that with their more advanced solar packages. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Take a look at this. You've got dual slide open peninsula countertops, one on both sides of the RV, almost like a motorhome. And what it can do is create the extra prep space that maybe you felt the RV was lacking otherwise. Um, and I mean, 
the the whole slide the refrigerator is just it's nothing but storage over there it's just tons and tons of storage on a heavy duty rack and pinion slide system so uh, that's what i think is really kind of cool about this is that it can be um as enclosed as you want it to be it can be as open as you want it to be it has all kinds of storage space here it's a good couples kind of dining arrangement but you also have that pair of fold away guest chairs and a table extension you can bust out whenever need be there's just um, a, a little bit of everything that this small kitchen space can do but for the most part i think being dedicated to just a couple people it's gonna get the job done for you very well very comfortably i think you're going to really enjoy the experience here and I don't think you're going to feel like you're really tripping over one another. Um, now, under that dining slide, that is a uh, marine woven kind of carpetless floor material, by the way. So again, no walkable carpeting really in this RV. A couple other interesting little details in those steps leading up to the entry. You may have noticed that motion light turn itself off. It's really cool how the steps of the uh, rear and forward upper decks had those motion lights. So, you know, you can make sure you're not taking a tumble anywhere now um down below there you've got your central vacuum system with the little electric dust pan i call the toe kick you just flick it up with your toe and it sucks everything all in one spot and i just literally <clears throat> choked on my own spit making that stupid sound effect i might need to quit doing that all of our controls are all uh you know hidden away over here but readily accessible so they're they're away from little fingers by the way that ceiling fan that we saw uh, above the kitchen, that actually is 12 volts, so you can use that even on battery power, which by the way, these are including from the factory 200 amp hours worth of lithium batteries, a pair of dual 100s, standard from Keystone, which is cool. And like I said, if you want the open air experience, you can have it here, or what you can do is pop these little peninsula countertops open and you can kind of create like a side kitchen if you will where i i think that those peninsulas create very organically like uh, uh just a forward to back walkway through the rv you've got your dining off to the side which doesn't really interfere or stick out or, or you know bump into anybody but if you really want to keep everybody out of the kitchen you have the ability to do that here now i don't use wide angle camera lenses that maybe would help connect these dots a little bit more i prefer to use just a flat angle lens so that it looks a lot more like you're going to see it with your own naked human eye in person when you come to see it or um in, in my case oops sorry I'm, I'm sorry about the camera there i bumped into something my um contact corrected vision <laughs> now the bathroom they do change the course just a little bit um which doesn't bother me because like at my house, my bathroom decor doesn't match, but it lightens and brightens everything up. And once again, you do not see the dollar store four inch fart fans. Full Monty Montana only uses the big ones all the way through. I really like how they do that medicine cabinet though. They do the storage off to the side, which leaves the mirror pushed back against the wall, which leaves more room for this vessel sink, which means you could actually bend over and like, uh, you know, wash your face in this thing without bonking your head against a cabinet, which I think is awful cool. Even including a little toe kick at the bottom of the cabinet so you can really get your belly right up there if need be. Now, porcelain foot flush stool, and if you take note here, some excellent, excellent space around it. I, that was a, it's a very comfortable experience there, even if you are a little bit uh, fluffier. And how cool is it that they're actually including dedicated wastebasket space here in that bathroom? I think that is so, so smart. I love that. Now, notice, too, they're not doing open face storage in the bathroom. Instead, they're actually giving us doors for the storage right there, or maybe doorage, if you will. Um, the the uh, is very deep. It's as deep as that shower is. So keep in mind, you may want to come up with some kind of storage tote solution for stuff that you put in the back of that so it's uh, easier to reach. You've got height adjustable shower hardware uh, in the bathroom as well. So like I'm a little bit taller uh, than my wife, but even at six foot plus, the uh, I can still stand in that shower without my head being in the bubble, which is very, very cool, I think. And scanning our way down here, it's all one piece, fiberglass molded, um, and it does have that corner seat right there, uh, which even if you don't use it for seating, being able to just prop your leg up on it to, you know, take the loofah and scrub down your feet and your ankles and your toes and stuff is really handy for a lot of folks. I know that's something that I've started doing as I've gotten older here. My belly's gotten bigger. I've started bringing my leg up to me instead of me bending over in the shower to get to that stuff. 
it just kind of works for me. Now, once again, just kind of completing the visual, giving you a look at all the storage here. Um, drawers to the floors in this bathroom, and I would normally call it space for a wastebasket under that sink, but again, with a dedicated wastebasket over here, I don't know that you got to worry about that at all. Um, working our way to the private rear bedroom now. Um, little details again, it's kind of, in. The, it seems like a weird location, but it kind of makes sense as well. It, it, it's readily accessible, right, when you walk in. And notice how that whole TV cabinet is, is on a crazy geometric shape right there to really make sure you're not neck cranking uh, over here in the, uh, by default, king bed. I think queen bed's still swaptional optional in these. And if you're looking at one like this that has a king installed from the factory, it, um, you can swap in a queen mattress and then all that we need to do is just shave the, the the wooden bed platform that the mattress is on and you could put a queen in this if you wanted more like walk around or maybe side stand space um if you notice though in the overhead area of the slide box they actually build in some like phone charging side stands up there both of the outlets on uh, either side of the slide box are inverter wired and you have household, uh, or pardon me, and you have USB plugs up in there. Of course, household, we're looking at those. But um, I, I, I've, I've heard some people say, oh, that'd be a good CPAP machine. I'm not a CPAP user. My understanding is you don't actually want those above your head. Um, you kind of want them, uh, you know, at your head level or below if possible, but I'm, I'm not a user. If somebody could maybe confirm that for me, I would, uh, you know, appreciate the extra insights there. Um, bedroom storage is no joke. Take a look at this down below the bed. You can see where you have space for those, um, twin, uh, dining chairs right there. Then in the rear, you've got dedicated uh, laundry storage and, of course, big-time closet space. What's really interesting about this, though, is it also has a, uh, a, a rear corner washer-dryer cabinet. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, your alarms might be going off right now. Hang with me just a second here. You can see how under the TV, you've got that good, like, six-drawer uh, dresser space there. And then once again straight across from the bed, angled down right at us where it's nice, easy, and comfortable, where you don't got to crane your neck up. Got ourselves that direct viewing entertainment center. But there is maybe something some folks might want to consider about a rear wall-mounted washer-dryer like this. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, you might know, typically, when a manufacturer puts a washer-dryer installation dead on the rear wall like this, the washer dryer suppliers will not honor their warranty because of how much violence you get from bouncing back here. First thing I did when I saw this, I immediately called the Montana manager. I'm like, uh, are you aware that this could be a problem? He says, absolutely. We've already worked with Splendid, who's the, you can get a factory installed washer dryer from Montana, Splendid variety. They said, as long as, you know, that we put it in, because of the amount of business we do with them, they said they would stand up and they would honor their warranty with our installation. So, Whereas basically no other RV I've ever seen that be the case. This is the one time there's really evidently no pause for concern for putting it back here. I don't know what makes one different than the other. I just know what I've been told. I want to relay that to you. And if you appreciate the extra insights, kind of like how we're about to close the slides and see this thing in road mode, hit that subscribe button. And uh, my train of thought just went off the tracks. Oh, this sucks. Although on that note, this thing's going to be like my underwear and this portion of the video is going to be fairly brief. Um, this thing has zero road mode access and function. It is 100% something uh, that really only functions at all when you get there and when you get the slides open because like the office is closed. Technically, you could Johnny long leg it and sit down in the one theater seat. But that is absolutely it. The way that everything is all packed and stacked in here, it heavily, heavily gets closed off and shut off with the slides closed. Really, the only thing that you can do is the one thing you need to do with the slides closed. Let's get in here and hit the buttons to open the slides. The good news is that every single slide operates on its own individual switch. And if you open just the slides on the door side of the RV, you can basically navigate the whole darn thing. And if you think about it, your big fold down stable steps. They actually, when they fold down, they stick out further than even the big dining super slide that I'm pointing at that you can't see. So assuming you can put the steps down, generally speaking in theory, you could open those two slides and have functional use of the RV when you do that. 
I had to come back in here and open the slide because I forgot my laptop in that front office. Oops. <laughs> Now we're a little bit nosed up here in this facility today, but what you're not hearing is that it is raining like crazy. So thank you Keystone for pulling this in for us so we can enjoy some footage today. But real quick, let's take another look at the weights and the measures over here. Uh, if we're gonna talk towing on this one, what are we looking at for a vehicle? Uh, I don't think dually is the wrong answer. When you start looking at this size of RV, the length, the the hitch weight, the, the total weight of it, um, Maybe there's some single rear wheel one tons that work for you, but generally speaking, I think you're in the, the, the family of a one ton. And I, I think for stability's sake, I don't think a dually is going to be the wrong answer out there, but I'm always open to input from the tow police. I don't always get it right. Because it's kind of funny when you stand back here and you look at it, it almost looks like a front bathroom the way, it, you know how a lot of front bathrooms have a bedroom slide kind of somewhere lost in the middle of the RV? That's sort of visually what it looks like to me, although obviously that's not what this floor plan is. It's enough to kind of throw somebody off, even with a lot of experience here. So uh, Montana doing Montana things. We got six point hydraulic automatic leveling. And if you're noticing, they have recently moved away from Schwintec slides and they have gone to uh, Norco slide systems on your upper decks. Now your main lower deck slides, that is still a rack and pinion hydraulic system, uh, but any of your upper deck slides are going to be individually switched uh, electric slides, uh, the Norco cable slides. Now what's interesting is their hydraulic slides, they've also actually put a controller, a flow control basically in these, so that like if you wanna open just the kitchen or just the living room, you can do that too. Now this is something that's easy to miss because visually, it, from the outside, that looks like the same 12 gallon water heater they were using, but they have actually since upgraded to a 16 gallon vessel. That's a 16 gallon gas electric quick recovery water heater, which is pretty cool. And you see how the furnace can actually slide open, uh, you know, from the outside for service purposes. Now enclosed docking center, hot, cool camp ratings, tank heaters, heated belly, all that stuff is very, very common in this big fifth wheel class. And this full Monty Montana, the step above high country that we're looking at, it has all those things. And I don't want to downplay that, but I also want to focus on the stuff that kind of makes it a little bit more special, like the Keystone Solar Flex Suite of solar options that you have available. Uh, by default, this would have 200 uh, watts of solar on the roof and a 15 amp controller. It'll still be Victron, it'll still be MPPT. But today we're looking at the 400i package, which has uh, two 200 watt uh, panels on the roof and it upgrades to a 30 amp controller. Also, um, it, it adds a, a, a 2000 watt inverter that you actually could have standard on any full Monty if you get the residential refrigerator, which is why some people are still going with the resi fridge on these versus the, uh, the, the 12 volt, even though the 12 volts a little bit bigger and has similar fast cooling capacities. Um, you can actually kind of like, if you go with the standard 200 watt solar package and resi fridge, you can get an inverter built right into it instead of having to go to the 400 package. But you're still going to have a, a battery murdering residential fridge if you want to do anything off grid. Then again, up here at a full Monty, this is still one of the only members of the entire Keystone family that can be dressed up and pressed up with their 1200 watt uh, solar package. Uh, most of the uh, uh, things within the Solar Flex family only offering up to 600 watts of solar. Now, this thing is a, it, it's the battleship USS Montana. And I gotta walk way back here where you're getting to look at all the staging materials in the background nobody wants you to see, but it's what I gotta do to give you a look at the whole thing in one shot. And from here, it kind of looks like it's one giant awning. You'll see that that is not the case, uh, thankfully. Now, working our way back up front here, a big rig like this is going to need some nice ride and handling features. And it starts right up front with the Road Armor shock dampening pin box. You'll see matching suspension shackles, bronze bushings, wet bolt fasteners, all the things you're going to want for a more comfortable towing experience. Now, um, I don't have a lot of personal experience towing big fifth wheels, but direct member of my family does. My father, in fact, and he's uh, had so many different fifth wheels over the years as previously being a dealer himself who always kept a high-end fifth wheel as a personal use demo and actually did use them. And he constantly says nothing ever towed better than his Montana. And uh, I mean, he had at least a dozen different fifth wheels in the time that I, uh, you know, w started working uh, in the business basically. Now this up front here, uh, we've got our TPMS relay. This is the Giggy box, which when you flick the disconnect off, it will hard kill. Um, any parasitic load off the batteries. And that's another really cool thing, something you can't see here, 
These all come with 200 amp hours of lithium batteries direct from the factory. That is something I think Keystone is once again ahead of the curve on. Now down here, you see those perforated punch outs. This is the, the standard front end in this thing, but you can also get this with generator prep or you can actually get it with a generator installed. Now here on the, what I'm calling full Monty, not high country, and, and the names throw people off. This, like the thing that's called just Montana is actually a step above high country in terms of widgets, whiz bangs, and all those kind of gadgets and gizmos. Um, the, uh, the full Monty that we're looking at actually gets a full high gloss exterior instead of just Phylon. So basically the fiberglass just looks uh, nicer. And like I said, this is not one giant awning, although it can kind of function as one giant awning. I actually intentionally uh, kicked the one out just a little bit differently from the other so you could kind of spot where they, uh, you know, don't meet in the middle. Uh, over here are stable steps because this is a big, heavy four plank step. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they give it the gas strut lift system so that uh, you don't got to blow it like, you know, your rotator cuff to get in and out of there. Um, <laughs> and if you notice, uh, a, a lot of times, like when people see an awning um, over a big slide out, they, they kind of don't like it because they feel like it eats up a lot of their patio space. I think that what it does is it just gives you a, a decent way to get over here to kind of what I'm going to call the main patio area. Now, if it is raining like a son of a gun, you're probably going to have the awnings away. And yes, there is a little bit of a gap in between the two. But what they did here is they gave us maximum awning uh, square footage, basically, on the campsite of our, uh, our V. Uh, our RV. I said that totally bass backwards. Anyway, now this all right here goes under the uh, the bedroom and the bathroom, which is kind of cool. And I like how they did this. So they don't just like if they would have just had a slide out griddle, it would have been up so high that the bacon grease would have been frying your eyebrows, uh, especially if you are a little more gravity friendly like my wife. What this does is it actually drops down seven inches so that on a, a person my size at about six foot, it's sitting at about my belly. It'd be at about uh, chest height on my wife, but still functional, maybe a little high, but still functional. And then over here, this is kind of cool. I hope we keep seeing more and more of these added to the RV industry. This is a little 12 volt. I'm gonna call it the drink drawer, but it could be the snack station, something like that. Basically a little 12 volt mini fridge, but notice it has a lock on the door. Somebody has who designed this has a friend who only brings the cheap drinks and wants to drink your good drinks uh, when you're at your campsite. I, I kind of laughed when I saw that. Like somebody's had a beer cooler rated more than one time. Now the awnings are up very high, but you also don't got to worry about them smacking your head. Now let's talk uh, more about the running gear and the, uh, the riding kind of stuff on this. So uh, first of all, You've got the uh, Road Armor suspension package on this that goes hand in hand with the pin box. And uh, what that's going to do, what I like about Road Armor is notice how they have a shock dampener both above and below the shackle. And what that does is it, it, it does a better job of preventing bouncing, not just diminishing it, but preventing it and then controlling it. And you see the, uh, the reddish, purplish, magenta, grease, whatever there. It's because they're actually using greasable fittings with bronze bushings. Basically, if you want to spend a lot of time on a road, uh, on the road. This is a uh, RV that has the running gear to keep you there. Now they're running on Saloon tires and this is something I don't know that a lot of people are well acquainted with but Saloons they are an import tire but they actually uh, are rated for 75 miles an hour. Uh, they uh, uh, have like a six-year warranty and frankly you should probably be changing your tires out about every five years. So if you consider the speed ratings and the warranty, they're actually in a sense kind of overbuilt for a lot of the expected use and function of the RV industry, which I think is cool. Now, a major thing Montana does, they have a TST tire pressure monitoring system, which is great. Um, you don't have to use the valve stem caps, it's all in the tire basically, but they also do that on the spare, which is something very precious few manufacturers. I've, I, I, I'm not aware of a lot of other manufacturers doing that. I think that's a really cool feature. Now, couple things here. If we uh, first look at this ladder, notice how high it is off the ground. And I mean, I got long legs, but check this out. Like I had to like really kind of try to get cute and stupid at the same time to, uh, wait, Cupid? Is that where the name C Cupid comes from? Cute and stupid? Probably not, but it makes sense to me right now. <laughs> but my point is, to get there, 
I used the 800 pound rated slide out cargo tray to act like the bottom step to get me up and down that ladder. Now you may have also noticed while we're up there, we took a look at the uh, the roof. Now we're looking at the triple air conditioner package today and the 400i solar package, which also has a second set of roof solar prep included with it. So if you wanted to expand on that, you very easily could. Um, there, there's, I, I tell you, I've done a whole separate video on the whole solar flex suite from Keystone. I'll try to remember to leave a link to that in the description. And if I forget, please leave me a comment and I'll get that caught back up for you. But the fact is, I think Keystone is really leading the way in terms of various factory solar solutions. So back here under the bedroom and the closet and washer dryer, we have this again, 800 pound rated, basically diesel pusher cargo tray from Moride down here. And it creates just a huge huge chunk of space in case you're on a, a National Lampoon's vacation and Aunt Edna happens to give up the ghost while you are on said trip. You got a place to put her so you don't have to like strap her to the roof because with the overhead clearance of this thing, I don't think I would recommend going under a, uh, a, a bridge if you had her up top. But moving on from there, this is something I, I, I was like, for sure they're gonna, I, I figured that they would have put two sewer outlets on this. I was, I was sure they were gonna screw that up. They didn't. They made it a single sewer outlet right here. And something else I think is kind of cool, all of their gate valves and everything are fully enclosed within the chassis rails where it's heated and insulated. And uh, your, your tank poles here, you just have this little access door. You don't have to like crawl around down on the ground. Now it is a little bit of a reach in there, but it's also something where you can bend over and you don't necessarily have to kneel down, which depending on the, uh, the mobility level that you have or don't have, that might be a thing worth considering for you. And I do believe we've made our way back around to the start, but something I forgot to discuss is how Montana's been doing this for years and a lot of other brands are finally catching up. They actually give you a dedicated hose uh, tube for your sewer hose, well, hose. I guess I should really sometimes think about the things before I say them, but um, I don't. <laughs> and um, apparently I forgot to record the um, end of this video. So instead we're gonna do a Ferris Bueller style and I'm just gonna say, you're still here? There's no more. Go home. Bye.